I'd like to say great day to the viewing audience. Welcome to Walking in the Spirit, hosted by the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research, Omaha. My name is Dr. Stefan Williams, and I will be your host for today's program. We're going to begin a new series entitled Comparative Exegetical Analysis. And I would like for those of you that are viewing this broadcast today to get out your Bibles, your notebooks, your pens, your pencils, your highlighters, and study with us. Let's get into the series. Mind is mostly, mind is most frequently associated with the mental state of a human being according to reputable lexicographers. Therefore, mind is constantly subject to fluctuating changes for better or worse, but not so in the sense of Yahweh or spirit. I need red reader, please. John, the fourth chapter, 24th verse, please. John 4 and 24 from the Holy Name Bible. For Yahweh is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Thank you, reader. As he said, for I am Yahweh, I change not. And that's according to Malachi, the third chapter, and the sixth verse, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Hugo Mustenberg, the former dean of psychology at Harvard University, made the statement that there is no such thing as a subconscious mind in existence. Here and now, I make the unconditional statement that Yahweh is not a sub conscious mind or universal mind. Instead, Yahweh is the all in all. That is to say, Yahweh is the eternal threefold. Yahweh is the eternal threefold. Universal spirit possessing the power of transmutation in two manifestations, incorporeal and physical. But in the absence of a clear, understandable definition and explanation of what spirit is and how it operates, we are still compelled to remain in ignorance or jeopardy. In pure literal sense of the word, spirit is abstract. But in the true divine etymological concrete sense, spirit is the all in all, or terminus ad quem, of whom a direct and profound knowledge is not claimed. The expression terminus ad quem refers to Yahweh in his abstract state or without form. You notice it says here, Yahweh is spirit, substance, essence, form, less, in his abstract state of existence. Being the limits and bounds of every conceivable and inconceivable idea of source and substance, wisdom and intelligence, knowledge and power, law and justice, love and mercy, beauty and glory. Get back up in the cloud for, for the viewing audience for a minute here. And you notice these nine divine attributes of Yahweh 
Yahweh is. He doesn't possess wisdom. He doesn't possess intelligence. He doesn't possess knowledge. He is divine intelligence. He is divine knowledge. He is divine wisdom. He is divine love. He is divine justice. He is divine beauty. He is divine power. He is divine strength. He is divine foundation, ladies and gentlemen. In the abstract sense, absolutely nothing exists before or independent of spirit. Neither can anything with or without shape, with or without shape or form be pre-existent or co-eternal with spirit. Therefore, as we have already said, Yahweh in this state of existence is pure spirit or abstraction. Let me get back here, please. Therefore, as we have already said, Yahweh in this state of existence is pure spirit or abstraction, but Yahweh in the process of taking on form or moving in part from the abstract to the intermediate state, conceive the idea of the concrete creation and desire to manifest or make himself known to his creatures of the creation. Now as Yahweh Elohim existed in form before he began his work of creation, he is, therefore, the threefold archetype spirit pattern of the universe. Get back up here. We see Moses, uh, Yahweh Elohim Yahshua. And it says right here Elohim, the archetype, meaning original pattern of the universe. And this is Yahweh in a superincorporeal form or the intermediate state or is it or his creative state transfigures into this threefold intangible tabernacle then back himself into himself you see him half of him then you see the creation coming up out of him or he manifests or transmutes it to every Thing that you see in the creation. Okay? It's a creation by the pattern. Or the creation at the creation by the pattern. But the original pattern or the archetype pattern is Yahweh Elohim Yahshua himself. Okay? Inasmuch as Elohim. In this intermediate state is the true original incorporeal pattern and spirit law by which the invisible and visible parts of the universe or creation must be systematically formed and given life. He must possess. Frame it there. I need red reader, please. Proverbs, the eighth chapter, and the twenty-second verse, please. Proverbs, eight and twenty-two. I'll go ahead and name Bible. Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of His way, before His works of old. Thank you, reader. Both masculine and feminine generative organs or the space of the universe containing everything within his spirit embodiment. Likewise, Elohim himself, the immaculate essence or substance, energy of life, and the immutable law intelligently manifesting himself or apparently transmuted in part in, in both the visible, the invisible, and visible counterparts of the universe. And we get down here for the viewing on it, just follow. 
And it says here, creation abides within Yahweh or eternity, beginning and ending. The clouds symbolizing eternity. And we have here the first age, creative age, where Yahweh Elohim created the invisible or the angelic creation first, and then created the physical creation afterwards, okay? Hence, the universe in its totality, back here, hence the universe in its totality without expression is, it, it includes every created object or thing visible and invisible, animate and inanimate, known and unknown, must derive from and abide within his great spirit embodiment. Keep it there. I need Red Reader, please. Acts 17, chapter 28, verse, please. Acts 17 and 28, our Holy Name Bible. For in him we live and move and have our being, as some of our poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Thank you, Reader. So as you see on this chart, you see this fiery cloud that's going all the way around the edges of this chart. And you see that there's nothing outside of this fire or this cloud. You see everything is within the cloud or within Yahweh. And we are the offspring of Yahweh. And we live and move and have our being within Yahweh. Herein, called the original incorporeal pattern, whereby and wherein all created things are formed, shape, animated, and constantly controlled thereafter with unerring accuracy by the inviolable and immutable spirit law. And you see here these hearts here representing spirit law or law of the spirit. Okay? Which is a part of the great universal incorporeal pattern. Now, at the universal creation, a term comprising the whole system of created things cannot exist independent of spirit. It is therefore embodied in spirit and divided into two distinctive parts, the invisible and the visible creation. Thus, the invisible and visible parts of the universe are two transmitted parts of the great invisible Yahweh manifesting himself through the universal creation. Here it is not meant that Yahweh in principle is changeable, but by means of the creation, the manifestation of Elohim is multiplied and understood through the realm of nature. Okay? We can get down here for the, for the viewing audience. We have the same embodiment which we show in, in the uh, above, on the above chart. This is Yahweh in the intermediate state or Yahweh Elohim, spiritual, spiritual embodiment. With all the nine divine attributes took on a shape and form more in more of a set position 
which is called the Godhead in your King James Bible, the Holy Name Bible, will say support on nature according to Romans, the first chapter and the 20th verse, ladies and gentlemen. Then, from, then he starts to create from this state forward, transmuting into everything that you see in the creation. Okay? By spirit law. You see where it says here? Spirit law. He is the spirit law himself. Or the law of the spirit, one and the same. That what these heart represents. Okay? And we understand what took place on the first day. According to Genesis, the first chapter, the whole chapter. We know what took place on the second day. We know what took place on the third day. We know what took place on the fourth day. The fifth day. So on and so forth. This is the physical creation that was created by the invisible Yahweh Elohim. Okay? So one can understand something about the Creator by the things, the physical things that you see in the creation. That's what the purpose is that, that the creation, the physical creation is for, to point to your Creator. And He is everything that you see in the creation, whether it be invisible or visible. Thus, the invisible and visible parts of the universe are the two transmitted parts of the great invisible Yahweh, manifesting himself through the universal creation. Here it is not meant that Yahweh in principle is changeable, but by means of the creation, the manifestation of Elohim is multiplied and understood through the realm of nature, hence the hence this leaves mankind totally, totally without legitimate excuse for not knowing Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. David, David, Yahshua the Messiah and Paul hold this view regarding the creation. And I'm going to be reading... Psalms, the 19th division, verses 1 through 7 from the Holy Name Bible. And just get this whole, uh, basically here. So you see all this, but I want it, it's like I'm just drawing it like that, get all that in there. Once again, I'll be reading Psalm, the 19th division, verses 1 through 7. From the Holy Name Bible, it says, The heavens declare the glory of El, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language whether their voice is not heard. Yet their message is going out through all the earth and their story to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of heaven and a circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing here from the heart thereof. The law of Yahweh is perfect. Converting the soul, the testimony of Yahweh is sure, making wise the simple. Keep it there, just keep it there. 
I'll need red reader, please. John, the third chapter, 12th verse, please. John 3 and 12 from the Holy Name Bible. If I have told you earthly things and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Thank you, reader. You can get right down here. Show all this. Make sure you can get from Elohim all of the five days here, each, each plate. Let's get it far back. Get all the way in for it. You can't. Make sure you get all that in there. Frame it. Got it? I'll need red reader, please. Romans, the first chapter, verse 19 and 20, please. Romans 1 and 19 and 20 from the Holy Name Bible. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. For Yahweh has shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and supernal nature, so that you, so that they are without excuse. Thank you, reader. We can also find substantiation in reading because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them, for Elohim has shown it unto them for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. See? Even his eternal power and supernal nature, so that they are, are, are with, so that they are without excuse. To a certain degree, Paul's view is very definitely confirmed by modern science through experimental, experimental atomic research and philosophical expression. This should furnish us with sufficient ontological proof that it is true that every cosmic phase of nature, visible and ultra-microscopic animate and inanimate, organic and inorganic is but some or another expression of the great invisible threefold Yahweh Elohim. So get back up here. Once again, this should furnish us with sufficient ontological proof that it is a true, that it is true that every cosmic phase of nature, visible and ultra microscopic, animate, inanimate, organic, or inorganic is but some or another expression of the great invisible threefold, Yahweh Elohim. I need red reader, please. First John fifth chapter verse seven, please. First John five and seven from the Holy, from the King James Version. For there are three that bear record in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Thank you, reader. You can give up here. So the reader just read from the, from the King James Version, 1 John 5, chapter, verse 7, King James Version says, for there, the, for there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, that's the, that's, the, that's the title of our heavenly Father, divine, holy name, only has one name, and that's Yahweh. And the Word or Son, his divine title is Elohim. He is the Word or Son. Also, the name of the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost has a name. That name is Yahshua, okay? These three are one. Yahweh is the Father. Elohim is the Word or the Son. And Yahshua is the Holy Spirit. It's Yahweh. Take on shape and form of Yahweh Elohim and manifest himself in the physical body of Yahshua Messiah. It's Yahweh here, Yahweh here, and Yahweh here, ladies and gentlemen. One spirit, two manifestations. I'm bringing back on down here. See? It says here, Yahweh is spirit, substance, essence, formless. It's, it's his abstract state. He's able to move in part of himself 
as Yahweh Elohim. Now he's in his Supreme Court will form. He's, he has a form now. In his abstract state, he is formless. Then he's able to take on a physical body or a physical form of himself as Yahshua, the physical form of Yahweh manifested in flesh. Okay? The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, these three are one, ladies and gentlemen. Viewing the facts before us, we wonder why it should be necessary for us to pause here and set up delicate mechanical instruments and register vibrations or make high-powered microscopic investigations trying to discover and prove the origin or of matter in defense of this inescapable truth. It's already known and scientifically proven that matter in its so-called inanimate or in, in inorganic state must and does derive from some definite source and previously existing infinite substance. And that will conclude today's program. Until we meet again next week, I like to leave you with these few words. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the kingdom of Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah.